The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bond. Ah, you're awful. And A.J. Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth. What's up, man? Not too much. What's happening? Ah, oh, not a ton. Not a ton. Uh, I mean, getting through Christmas and all that kind of good stuff. It's been a pretty uh, crazy last couple of days here. Kids are a little, little wound up. I think you can understand that. And uh, but yes. but it's fun. Yeah, it's hard to get them to bed when they're this wound up, man. But it's fun, man. They enjoy it. I enjoy it. Um, it just you know, as a parent, a little tired sometimes. But what's what's new with that, right? Oh yeah. Anyway, man. Um, so this is the last show of the fantasy football uh, season, 2019 season. We will not be doing a recap of Week 17 and, and anything like that. So we're gonna do our, our final show now. Give out all our awards. For the 2019 season, uh, before we get into that, uh, why don't we talk about how our season's finished? I know we've been kind of recapping people, uh, recapping things throughout the the playoffs here. Uh, so, how did your your week 16 go for you? I know you're in a few finals. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I was in three championship games and one toilet bowl game. Um, and the only one that I won was the toilet bowl game. So <laughs> not uh, not that first, great. First pick, though, right? I mean, hey, hey, or is that not part yeah, of it? Yeah, I mean, that that one's good. That's my <laughs> work league. So I basically, uh, I mean, I pretty much ran the team almost the entire year. I mean, I did the draft. My, my boss was on vacation, so... He wasn't able to attend, but we were kind of texting back and forth. And then the other guy was like MIA for, for the draft, but him and I were pretty much figuring out the moves and everything like that. But uh, our team just fell apart all season, as I've mentioned numerous times. And then we just got hot at the end of the season. And, you know, one week 12, one week 13 still went in as the last possible seed, but worked our way all the way through and, uh, had the, actually had the second highest score of the week. So that was pretty cool. Nice, but, man. You know, whatever. Uh, my other league, uh, my other two leagues, uh, not not excluding the Fantasy Six Pack League, which we'll get to in a minute, I'm sure. Um, Maybe. <laughs> we, uh, uh, I, I had the, the second seed in one and the sixth seed in the other. And faced off against, I think, the four seed in both of them, actually. Wow. And both guys had Aaron Jones. Oof. I had Kirk Cousins and, like, a four-point lead in the one. And then I had uh, Diggs and, like, close to a ten-point lead in the other one. And Minnesota sucked. So Yeah, to say the least. Uh... So that didn't help. So for me, I had three championships and won third place. Lost the third place game uh, because similarly the that the game just kind of stunk offensively. If you didn't have Aaron Jones, um, I went against in the third place game. I had Thielen and Rogers and a four point deficit to overcome, and he had Jamal Williams and was able to keep it. That's just sad. I mean, like, I couldn't do anything, right? Um, yeah, I mean, Rodgers has been kind of, as we've mentioned numerous times, Rodgers has been disappointing all year. Um, minus a few games. But uh, one of the one of the championships of the Dynasty League, I've been to the championship three out of six years, lost all three. Um, pretty pretty disappointing. Um, I, I'll get, I got to get out of this hump eventually. Um, the other two championships I did, I did take out, um, work league, which will be fun. Cause it's, it's the last time I'm, I'm eligible for it. Cause I'm no longer working there. If, if you guys caught the, the Twitter message a few months ago, I, uh, well, not a few months ago, maybe about a month ago, I decided to 
not work anymore and, and put some more time and effort into the fantasy six pack and then also do the whole stay at home dad thing. So no longer in that work league. So took it down in the last year. So that's fun. And then of course the other final I took out was, uh, was ours. So yeah, I am finally fantasy six pack league champion after what? Seven years of this damn league and been the number one or two seed. I feel like four or five different years. It's just annoying. And then I just get ousted in the playoffs and finally, finally took it down. Not going to lie, I got a little luck to go my way. Uh, my team was decimated by injuries <laughs> before the matchup, and then it got even worse as the matchup happened. Um, <clears throat> although your injuries during the week helped. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we've got, yeah. The, we've got the slide with the, uh, the final rosters, the starting rosters up on the, up on the screen. Mine's on the left with Jameis Winston. Yours on the right with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, yeah, started out pretty bad for me on Saturday, man, with, with Winston doing nothing. And I was like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> uh, but thankfully, and Ryan Fitzpatrick decided to throw two touchdowns to Mike Gusecki, who I just randomly had on my team because Evan Ingram got hurt like six weeks ago, decided never to come back. Um, Rolled the dice on Galladay, who we neither one of us really liked. Rolled the dice on Edelman, who neither one of us really liked coming into the week, and they did okay. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the bit the big kicker to me is just kind of how funny it was that like I was so pissed off about not getting Mike Boone, and I decided to start. I had to start DeAndre Washington ahead of him, and like literally that was the difference in the matchup. Uh, not quite, but close. Uh, yeah, it's close. It was close. I mean, Washington was. Definitely had a nice game for for who he is. I mean, and what you know, as a fill in, basically, Mike Boone was a fill in and uh, did nothing. I, I mean, I think part of the problem with that was he just couldn't find any room, anyways. And they also they just gave up on him. They, they started using Abdullah like dude, the whole second half. You want to hear something way worse? Okay. Oh, I know you're mad about losing this, right? Uh, yeah, but yeah. look, you lost by like what eighteen? <laughs> Third almost championship 20. I've lost to you. Yeah, what? A, two of them were basketball though. So two were basketball. My it. team was like straight up dominant that year, both those years. So we'll see. Anyway, this one though, I know you're mad about losing this, but how mad would you have been had you gone into halftime with Mike Boone on your team, the halftime of the Monday night game, losing by point seven six, and then coming out of the game losing by point seven six. That was my wife. That was my yeah. wife. I, I I had a feeling that's where you're going with Monday it, night. Seeing a tweet. Monday night, literally. <laughs> I remember uh, looking over at her. I was sitting in the chair, looking over on the couch, and I was like, "All you need is a all you need is a ten yard run, and you got it." And I looked over at her at the end of the game. Was like, "I have no idea what just happened." <laughs> and I went, "But I beat uh, AJ." You still need a ten yard <laughs> run. I would, but uh, I beat AJ. Over, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah I, I mean, that, that was yeah, that was brutal. But like literally, though, I was thinking about it. Like, had had I gotten Boone, I would have started Boone over Washington. You would have started Lindsay over Boone because you wouldn't have had Boone. That's the difference. Yeah, I would have. I would have kept Lindsay in. So how and, funny is it that I would have like, done it because. Pissed. Yeah, I mean, Lindsey had like eighteen some odd points. Yeah, that so just I mean that made the difference. Washington. Well, it's not just that. Like, I wouldn't have started Washington, so I drop. No, I know like fourteen you points, you and then you gained. So it would have been like a thirty-two point swing. Yeah, it would have been massive. So yeah, something like that. Uh, I mean, it's just, dude. Believe me, I've been yeah. there. I've done that. I've lost this league numerous times. Being the one or two seed, the clear favorite, and just like something fluky happens like this, I feel your pain, man. I really do. I'm not gonna rub well, it in too bad, trust me. Uh, but you'll hear from me a few times. <laughs> yeah, just because it's you. I fully expected because you would and, do it to and, me. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, just looking, just looking at the points too. It's like it was an ugly okay, week. Gasecki was was fluky, but that you know kind of canceled out a little bit of Fitzpatrick. But dude, Washington was your second highest score. It's yeah. This week I mean, sucked, dude. 
it really, it came down like the only teams I know that scored a lot were the teams that had McCaffrey, Aaron Jones. Um, you know, Lamar did well. You know, guys like that. Like, yeah, I went into this matchup with none of those guys. Um, Winston was on fire, did nothing. Um, yeah, you know, more more got hurt because of Winston falling flat. <sighs> but he still did okay, though. I mean, I know. I mean, it's yards. still a decent game for yeah, for, just, for just some did. guy that you picked up a week ago. Yeah, he just know, didn't score it, or literally this this week for this matchup. But I mean, yeah. after. Two weeks ago, I guess what it, whatever it was, he just blew up. So, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. Tyreek doing New nothing England, Sunday night. The New England not showing up really hurt me too. I mean, I I felt like that was just going to be a big defensive game. Yeah, you bet. You and bank it on those was, but they just no turnovers, no nothing, do yeah. anything. Yeah. And then I had the Colts with twenty six freaking <laughs> points <laughs> sitting on my bench. Just hilarious because I had the Colts as my sleeper. <laughs> For the week last week, I wouldn't have started him over the page. Dude, you played the right guys. It doesn't work out, man. Like, honestly. It, yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean playing, even if I would have played Lindsay, I still would have lost. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. It, it would have been over before Monday night. Yeah. Like, at least me making that change gave me some kind of a chance. Yeah. No. But you're right there. You know, Connor, F him. Uh, I'm so <laughs> pissed off about that trade. Because I traded away Chubb, and then there was two receivers. I think there, were, there was John Brown and Beasley, and I can't remember. I think I traded John Brown and got Beasley back. I, I don't, and I don't really understand that trade, but okay. Well, yeah, it was like two, two like well, they weren't really doing that much at that point. It was kind of just like whatever. So, I mean, even if I had Chubb though. I probably would have had a different seed going into it. And, uh, yeah, probably. You know, my my team had a complete turnaround. Yeah. After going zero and four to start the season, so I, I hey. like where I was, and I love being the sixth seed and getting to the championship game. But yeah, the, the nightcap with Hill and Miller really hurt me too, yeah. and just really put a lot back onto Mike Boone doing something that. And when, yeah, nothing. after the Winston and. Perryman kind of let down. I um, when when Hill and Miller basically gave you nothing, I was like, oh, so I've got a chance. And then Fitz yeah. went off, but I was like, well, thankfully Fitz went off, giving most of it to Kaseki, so that helps. But at that point, I was still an underdog. And then you know, more getting hurt, but like, and then Connor got hurt for you, and so it just like it all just started balancing out. And I was like, just yeah, just and I was like, holy like, cow, I lose man. a guy, you lose a guy. Then yeah, I lose this was guy. an ugly matchup, man. Like, uh, yeah, it was, but I, you know, all I gotta say is it was a hell of a 2019 for me. I took down the basketball league, took down the baseball league for the first time, it took down the football league for the first time. A fantasy six pack, feeling pretty damn good. So, <laughs> but. Uh, Let's move on, man. I'll, I'll stop uh, patting my own back here. Let's go to Beer of the Week. All find, right. find the Muzak. Mm, beer. Hi, right, man. Let you go first. What you got? So I went to uh, my my buddies over at Christos tonight and picked up a bunch of different stuff. But uh, tonight I'm drinking the Left Hand Brewing Company uh, IPA, India Pale Ale. That's basically just all it says on it. Cool. Um, it's pretty good though. It's, uh, it's only uh six and a half, six point six percent. 6.6%. I mean, it's, it's pretty light, the little, little piney, but not, not overpowering. Um, but it's just got a nice, uh, like simple, smooth IPA taste to it. Nice man. Uh, so I'm going with one that you've had in the past that I've been kind of waiting to put on and it's the, uh, 75 minute IPA by dogfish head. Um, Again, you know, you've mentioned this before. It's a it's a mix of the sixty and the ninety, which neither one of us are fans of the sixty, and and we're, I think we're fans of the ninety, but you know, we got to be in the mood for it. Um, yeah. But you know, it's it's a nice blend. Um, it's still not one of my like super favorites, but it's definitely, uh, it feels like ten times better than the sixty, which I just really despise. Um, it's not quite the ninety for me, but you know, I think I gave it. I need to look it up. I forgot to check this in. Uh, as as I opened it here, but I gave it a three and three and three quarters on untapped. I believe I give the ninety like a four and a quarter because just I feel like whatever reason I opened it up, 
the night that night and I was like, Oh damn, this is like super good. Um, the next night I don't feel like I thought the same thing, but yeah, it's a good one, man. So, uh, obviously the 60 is 6%, the 90 is 9%. So this is right smack dab in the middle at 7.5. Um, but yeah, I enjoy it and I've, I've got another one of these in the fridge. I might crack it open later. A little celebratory beer. If you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I was thinking of either keeping the, uh, holiday buzz going with some eggnog and a little bit of a whiskey and brandy that I was mixing into it. Or I was just going to go straight, you know, bourbon since it's our last show of the year and hey, of man. the season. Do what you got to do. Uh, but whatever. I decided I'd go buy some beer. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess it's this is technically <clears throat> just the left hand IPA. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, so I'm man. checking it in. So, <clears throat> um, but yeah. So let's jump into some news and notes here. Um, Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't, I we don't have a lot going on. Definitely, but. definitely not a lot. Um, I do, I do want to, you know, mention the fact that Beast Mode's returning to Seattle because they have no running backs left. Uh, it's basically Travis Hosmer, not Hosmer, Travis Homer, Homer um, and now. Robert Turbin and Marshawn Lynch. I have no idea what to expect from Marshawn Lynch or Robert Turbin. In fact, I did not rank a single one of them this week. I might change it as the week goes on and I hear some practice news and notes and things like that. But right now, we hear nothing, so they get nothing. Um, uh, you know, if, yeah, if, I'd be, I'd be kind of surprised if if Lynch. I mean, I would guess he might suit up because they kind of need. Some they just need bodies out there, but I mean you gotta I, imagine I mean, that I don't Homer's know. gotta be the guy, right? I mean he's gotta be he's been there all year. He's gotta be the main guy. I yeah. I don't know. Would it also surprise me if he gets twenty touches and like seventy yards and a touchdown? No, because weird things happen, right? He knows yeah. he probably knows the offense. But I, I just find it hard to trust. You know, will I slide him in at like sixty or fifty just for the hell of it because whatever the guys at the bottom are garbage. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm not really worried about it right now. The other news is that, um, uh, bu- 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 so obviously week 17, shockingly, the only team that has locked up their seed and their playoff spot. Well, there's teams that have locked up their playoff spot, but the only team that has locked up their seed is the Baltimore Ravens. So of course, Lamar Jackson, uh, tweaked an ankle I think or something like that but it's not serious Mark Ingram has the calf strain Andrews has a like multiple injuries a bunch of other players on that team aren't going to play but you know, clearly missing those guys if you happen to be playing in week 17 is going to be pretty huge and you know I, can you trust the backups RT3 and Justice Hill and Gus Edwards eh, maybe but they're also playing Pittsburgh who really needs to win to get in and yeah I'm not really dying to use anybody from that team right now. Uh, so, yeah. That, well, and that's, that's that. the other thing, too. It's, uh, well, no, never mind. I was going to say, if if uh, Baltimore just kind of folds and lets Pittsburgh sneak into the playoff because they win and get the help they need, then they could be seeing them in the playoffs, which they don't want to do. But, then they would most likely be the six and would have to, you know, bounce the first team that they play anyways. So I, I just, I don't see that happening. <clears throat> I would like it if the, the Baltimore backups just beat Pittsburgh though. That would be pretty funny. That would be really <laughs> hilarious. Actually. I'm not a huge Baltimore fan. I, you know, I live close and so do you, but I, I, know. I, I do enjoy watching Lamar and his hype man, Mark Ingram. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, uh, it's not really anything I'm like, <coughs> excuse me, uh, dying to watch cause I'll sure I hear it. Um, but anyway, yeah. So there's one, one other, uh, bit of news that we can go into and continue to pat yourself on the back here. My co-host and uh, fantasy six-pack league champion, thanks to me and Boone, uh, 
finished this year as number five overall on Fantasy Pros for the in-season rankings as one of the most accurate fantasy football experts. So round of applause. Thank you, man. A man here. Thank you. Thank you. uh, That is quite the solid accomplishment. Um, And just looking at, at these other names up here, that you know you're you're meshed in with it's uh it's a pretty solid company for sure yeah bunch bunch of studs i mean justin boone mad props to him he was number one for like two-thirds of the season basically he took it and then never gave it up um it the guy's been a staple of the top 10 for like the last eight years it's been crazy how consistent he's been he finally got over the hump so mad mad congrats to him you know obviously john paulson four for four big time we obviously know Nathan Janky, you know, Pro Football Focus, Chris Raybon, Action Network, same network as uh, uh, our, our friend uh, Sean Conner, uh, who has been number one many times and three times in a row as of late. Um, fans of footballers, J- Jason Moore, you know, they're always good. In fact, I think all three of them were like top 20. So just they're awesome. Uh, you know, Pro Football Focus, obviously Fancy Pros, um, and then – Friend of the show, Jake Seeley from the Athletic. You know, Patrick Patrick Thorman established a run. He's he's awesome. You know, it just shows you how like uh, competitive this was. The fact that like Sean and some of the famous footballer guys weren't in the top ten. Um, I, I feel totally like humbled the fact that I'm even like mentioned with these guys. It is incredible the uh, outpouring of followers coming my way on Twitter is incredible. I wrote a tweet later uh, earlier today saying that I was up like 5,000 while that has, as of them announcing these top five, it is now 6,000 plus uh, followers this, this, this football season. So um, look, basically it comes down to, I'm just happy to be able to help you guys. That's why I started this site. That's why I started doing this. I like talking about this stuff and giving out what I think I know. <laughs> and it looks like it's starting to pay off. Um, and hopefully it can continue, man. Let's, let's kick ass in 2020. Absolutely. Congrats so, again. And uh, Thanks, man. It's very, very well earned. I know it's a lot of work to it do is. all these rankings. Yeah. And, you know. Some oh. of the, the names you don't see up there, the guys from ESPN and Yahoo, because well, they're too chumpish to even do it. Well, you know, the they Yahoo don't, guys they don't do it. Be wrong. The Yahoo guys <laughs> do it and the CBS guys do it. Um, ESPN does not. Um, and, and I get it. I mean, honestly, like the ESPN guys, I mean, they really have nothing to, they really have nothing to gain by it. They only have things to lose, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. They're already so huge. You know, if yeah. they, if they, if they, if they do poorly, then they're just going to get shat on even more. Right. So like, you know, it, there's really no reason for them to do it. Um, it would be kind of nice to see how you would do against some of those guys. Cause you know, the, the, like they're the big names, right? Um, everybody knows Matt Barry and everybody knows, you know, those guys out there. So, but so be it, you don't, you know, there's, there's other sites that don't put their rankings on there. You know, it's whatever, yeah. man. but it's good. Yeah. It's good company to be in. That's for damn sure. Regardless of those guys doing it or not doing it. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, so, man. Let's get to our awards here. So, we wanted to have some fun today and give out some awards. We're gonna give out. We're gonna start with our positional rankings. Um, so, quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, tight ends, and we're gonna start with the bust and then go into the MVP and. We we decided to have even more fun with it and and um, and name the awards after players who were basically busts or uh, MVPs kind of consistently throughout their career, right? Um, yeah. So what we did is uh, we did the Ryan Leaf Quarterback Bust Award. So I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you have at a first man. Who do you give yours to? All right. So my Ryan Leaf of 2019 is Mr. Baker Mayfield. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, this guy was so <laughs> hyped coming into this year, and, and 
fairly rightfully so. I mean, he had a great finish to last year. Cleveland went out and got a bunch of new guys to help him, you know, grow on the field. And, and, you know, they were the, the, basically the Super Bowl team that was, was going into the, the game even before the season started. So, uh, you know, I, I just look at, at where he was drafted versus what he ended up doing and, you know, how he turned from, you know, this energetic kid somewhat fresh out of college into basically George Costanza with a mustache um yeah yeah it was just a very down season and people got burned for for drafting him where they did yeah man he was a a big 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 letdown i took him in one of my best ball leagues and got burned huge for it so totally understand that pick um i'm going with a guy who um was drafted one ahead of Baker in ADP, and that is Aaron Rodgers. Uh, as I kind of alluded to earlier here, um, Aaron Rodgers, I mean, look, he had a fairly good season. You know, the team is performing very, very well, and that's really all that matters. Um, but this team has turned into a, you know, let's get the lead, let's run the ball. And then let's, you know, just play ball control. And and, and Aaron Rodgers doesn't really have to do much. Um, he also just hasn't really looked like the guy anymore. Like, he doesn't look like Aaron Rodgers, right? Um, you know, 24 passing tees, three interceptions, you know, one rushing touchdown, um, 256 fantasy points. Just isn't really getting it done, man. So I think he is like QB 11 or 12. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find it right now. I have it somewhere. Um, you know, he's according to ESPN in, in one of our leagues, he's QB nine, um, averaging 17.3 fantasy points. But honestly, man, like he's got one game of, uh, 25 one game well so it really is one game of 43 and then another game of 28 and another game of 27 after that it's 12 14 13 9 18 okay 12 9 11 14 and then this past week eight there's just too many game weeks where he has done not he's finished like qb 20 or worse he's just had like three or four really good weeks that's not yeah. getting it done for me, man. Like, I don't care if he's QB nine or not. That's not doing it for you. He's killed you no, too I many mean, weeks. The only the only way that helps you is if you happen to pick him in DFS on one of those blow up weeks. Basically. If you pick him in any of those other weeks or you're rolling with him in regular season leagues, you're getting burned every other week, it seems like. And yeah. I mean more than every other week. Um I mean, he can put some okay games together, but he just doesn't have it this year. And mm-hmm. I mean, the the stats are. I mean, the the yardage is seems way down to me. The, the passing touchdowns, I I kind of touched on that beginning of the season, the preseason shows, and in my articles. Just, I mean, it's a nice number, but twenty four passing touchdowns is something you would expect out of you know, somebody you draft as a backup, I feel like. I mean, there's a lot of guys yeah. hovering around that, like, 24, 25 range, so he's not terrible. I mean, like, yeah. Um, but, like, I don't know, just especially with all the quarterback injuries that have happened this year, you kind of expected him to be a little bit higher. I mean, like, take this, for example, Ryan Tannehill, right? He's got 20 passing touchdowns already. <laughs> he started, what, like, well, that's, five that's games? That's what I mean. It's yeah. nuts. Like, not but, necessarily someone you draft as to, to be your backup, but like all of these other guys who've come in and kind of played partial seasons. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple of them that are right around that as well, or, yeah. or, you know, slightly under, 
but they're still playable. Like you could go out and get these guys like a Fitzpatrick. I mean, Tannehill is a great example because he's so freaking accurate this year and he's been really good. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, the three interceptions is awesome, but Drew Brees missed what? How many games? And he's got 24 and four. So there you go. Yeah. I mean, he if he was healthy the whole year, he'd probably have forty plus. So, yeah, and Michael crazy. Thomas would have broken Marvin Harrison's record in <laughs> week ten. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, man. Let's move on here to our MVP, right. our Peyton Manning QB MVP of twenty nineteen. Uh, who do you got? Uh, I'm somewhat painfully going to have to say Dak Prescott. But at the same time, I'll go back to, again, my QB review article from eight months ago. You called it, Seems man. like You called it. He was, he was the guy that I was using as my sleeper in that article. Mm-hmm. Look, at, look at his numbers compared to uh, Rodgers. And, and this is a guy that was potentially not even drafted in some leagues. I think he was one of the – I think he was in the last round in our league. And, uh, yeah, he was pretty late in most leagues. Uh, you know, and it, it, 4,600 yards. That's a that's a huge number. You know, the rush yards, okay, it's nice. You know, he's got three rushing touchdowns, which is solid as well. But the guy finished his QB3? I mean, come on. that That's phenomenal value mm. to me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, he's had a hell of a season. Uh, yeah. But... You know, fortunately, the Cowboys hopefully won't win the NFC East, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Yep. Uh, so mine I'm wearing, I'm wearing my feels, green. feels like a little obvious. I could go a different route. You know, I guess if I wasn't going to pick Lamar, I'd pick like a Josh Allen or something like that, right? But Lamar has been too good, and he was – dude, he was free in some drafts. Um, yeah. In others, he went like 11-12. He went after the top 12 in – the vast majority of leagues, top twelve quarterbacks is what I mean. Um, some people bought into him, some people didn't. I was not one. I really just did not see this progression happening. I was really worried about his inaccuracy, his reliancy on his legs. But he has proved that it doesn't even matter. He's going to break records in rushing. He broke Michael Vick's record, smashed it. By the way, um, yeah. He has 36 passing touchdowns with 3,100 yards. I mean, just super efficient, like crazy efficient. It's going to be interesting to me next season how people evaluate him going in. And we talked about this a little bit a couple weeks ago, and I don't want to get into it too much. But it'll be interesting because everybody has that argument, and I'm usually the one to kind of side on the – be cautious with it, where it's like they're going to regress, right? But how far? Um, You know, it's – you know, the Cam Newton, you know, regression back down to like awful, uh, not awful, but just like average to where like you never want to, you don't want to draft him where he's going. But I mean, he's a league winner. Now, weirdly enough, I beat the team who had Lamar in the semifinal matchup. And there's a bunch of teams that I know lost with Lamar randomly, but I, he, I was one of them in my he, other six seed yeah, matchup. He, I had Lamar and Ingram. He, he is a league winner. Like his stats are incredible. He has count it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven thirty point fantasy games. And then he has another one, two, three, four, five, six, twenty point fantasy games. And a couple of those were like right near thirty. His lowest was eleven point four when he played Pittsburgh in week five. His lowest. Yeah. His I next mean, lowest, by the way, was 19.8. So <laughs> I think you're okay with Lamar, 19.8 man. 19.8 is like a great day for It Rogers. is, dude. It, <laughs> it is. Like, probably beats like He half makes of the his good game. defenses look silly. San Fran, 22. Uh, Buffalo, 19. Um, New England, he put up 28 against. He looks, he just is on another level right now, man. And that's why I am okay calling him my MVP, even though it was just like the obvious choice. I know that, you know, you don't want to be the guy that just does the obvious one, but yeah. it, I got to, man. Yep. Yeah. So let's move on to our running backs here. We'll start off with our busts again. This is the 
Lawrence Phillips, running back bust award. And I had to go with Le'Veon Bell. Um, I had a couple of different guys up here, but we kind of moved them around and talk about them a little bit later. But I I mean, Bell was pretty much consensus first round pick. Yeah, like five Um, or six. Maybe early, late second. I mean, early second round on the turn. Um, But a lot of people were just putting a bunch of stock into him and and they kind of got burned. I mean, rushing wise, less than 750 rushing yards. I mean, that's pretty bad. Um, only three <laughs> rushing touchdowns. Yeah, the touchdowns. The really only saving you. grace for Bell was his receptions and his targets. I mean, 73 targets is pretty solid. 61 receptions. He still only had 425 yards, though. I mean, I feel like that's a pretty low number for the amount of receptions. Uh, but he still only had one receiving touchdown. So he finishes out as a, as a running back 19 for a guy who was drafted in the first round. I mean, that's not cutting it at all. And I know the Jets were a pretty piss-poor team this year. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, you got to be better than that. For yeah. a first rounder, yeah, Bell Bell got me in one league. I kind of bought into the height near the end. Uh, I kind of kicked myself for that, but thankfully I only got him in one league. But mine's gonna be uh, Mr. David Johnson, and I mean, I was another one where you know you thought Bruce Arians was coming in, his offense was gonna be different, or not not Bruce Arians, sorry, this type of um, uh, what's his name? Um, man, totally blanking. Uh, the guy from Texas Tech last year. Um, oh, uh, da, 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 da. yeah. Anyway, Kling, Kling, uh, Kingsbury. Kingsbury. Yeah, and like the, the first week, you were like, "Oh man, awesome, twenty-two points." And then the next week, seven point nine. You're like, "All right, all right, whatever." But then in you know he had fifteen, then seventeen, then seventeen, then twenty-five, and you're thinking like, "All right, all, right, all, all is good, man. He's gonna be fine." Well, then he gets hurt. Then he then he misses a couple games and then he comes back and he's like, just dead. He's literally dead. He can't run. He looks just totally done. Shot. Um, then they trade for Drake. You know, um, they're using Chase Edmonds a bunch, and he's gotten a total. Count it a total of nine, twelve, fifteen, seventeen carries. And six receptions in the last six games. What on earth is happening? Um, so, David Johnson, you are a total bust. So Another first-round pick Yep, that finished way, <laughs> way he below dropped, He was drafted ahead of Bell. I mean, I know he got hurt for a couple games, man, but... It was only a couple games. You did not expect him to come back and just be total. Like we talked about it that that week after, you know, he just had that like total dud where he like tried to run and juke and it just looked like he was carrying a hundred pounds on his back. You were like, yeah. what happened to David Johnson? Is he really bad? Or is he as good as he was the first six weeks? But when you look at it though, the first six weeks, he just got a ton, a ton of work. And that's really all it was. So it wasn't efficient. It was just a ton of work. So they went with Drake because Drake's been awesome, at, obviously. So Drake yeah. finished just just for sense of uh, you know comparison here. Drake finished at running back eighteen, <laughs> and he really didn't do a damn thing until he got to Arizona. Absolutely not. So I mean, as soon as that trade went through, he he took off, man, and he was a huge focal point of that offense. But mm. yeah, Johnson definitely a bum. But the the other point I really want to make right there is is too. He had almost half the amount of receptions as Bell, but he did so much more with his. And that's why to me I'm looking at Bell's number and it's like 425 receiving yards is is I mean, for a running back, I guess that's pretty good. But you would expect him to also have maybe 1,200 rushing yards at that point. So, all right, moving on, we've got the Ladanian Tomlinson 
running back MVP award. A lot, a lot of guys we could have gone with for the, yeah, for the name of the award here. But definitely plenty of, of solid, you know, uh, nominees, we'll call it. But I was going to say, um, even I'm, for the name of the award, man, there was a lot of guys I was tossing it up well, between yeah. him and I mean, Falk we, and, and, and those Aaron guys. Sanders. We, I mean, there's so many that you could have gone yeah, with. A ton, so, ton of studs, man. Um, but I'm, I'm going with Derrick Henry for my vote. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I mean, you were pretty bullish on him coming into the season. I wasn't a big fan. I didn't own him in any leagues, and I, I dude, I would actually no, I was not. I hated him. I wanted nothing to do That's with him. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Yeah. And uh, like, I just, I feel like he just, he just came out every, every week. And just put up numbers. And he was dealing with little ticky tack injuries and stuff like that all year. Um, but I, he found a way to get it done. And then, especially when Tannehill came in, too, I mean, I feel like he was more of that offense. Um, but, you know, AJ Brown started stepping up um, and, you know, he became a go to. So he helped free up a little bit of, of running room for Henry as well. Yeah, it was so. pretty crazy. I, I, I thought I thought Deion Lewis was gonna get more of a share in that backfield, but man, I was totally dead wrong. <laughs> yeah. So let's not let's not everybody forget I said that. Um so mine for for the MVP award, I mean obviously McCaffrey, he's just been out of this world good. I mean I'll just read the stats here real quick. I mean thirteen hundred thirteen hundred rush yards, fourteen touchdowns. 109 receptions for 933 yards and four receptions, four reception touchdowns. I read a stat on Twitter today, and I didn't verify it, but if you just make him a receiver and all he has is those receptions and the yards and touchdowns, he's like receiver number 13. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, he is like, we were talking about this before the show. He's like 90, no. He's like he's like eighty points ahead of the next running back in half PPR, and he's over a hundred points ahead of the next running back in PPR. It's just insane how good he's been. But that's the obvious pick, and he was like a third, first to third pick in most drafts. So mine, if we're going MVP with basing a little value into the pick, like we've been doing with all the rest, Austin Eckler. Yeah, he rose up the boards a little late when Melvin Gordon, you know, holdout was kind of really coming true. Um, but overall, this guy was a super value. You were getting him anywhere between rounds six late in season. And like, if you're doing drafts early, probably 13. I mean, it's, I didn't look at the ADP numbers, but I, I'm pretty sure that's where I saw him. Uh, but he's been just good, man. Like just straight up good. Um, even it, obviously he, he was like just lighting the world on fire without Gordon there. But even, even when Gordon got back, man, we told you this. Do not trade him for chump change. He's going to be good. They're going to yeah. use him because Gordon's not going to be full strength. And he's good. Like 11, 11, 17, 14, 29, 10, 9.4. At worst, man, he's an RB2 flex, right? And some weeks he's an RB1. So you probably didn't draft him as an RB2. So you were getting super good value, and he finished the fantasy football year, the season, through week 16 as RB5 in half PPR leagues. So that is my MVP. Yeah, solid pick for sure. I mean, I, I'm very uh, interested to see what he looks like for next year since it's Gordon – probably will be with a yeah, team. It, it'll it be very again, interesting to so. see if they keep him as like the primary guy. Again, I think he proved he can do it. Yeah. Or if they go and trade for somebody, because you know they, there was rumors that they were looking at guys. Um, or if they draft somebody. Um, you know, his, I think his early draft value, if, you know, like best ball of drafts, and right, that this are crazy and happen in like April before the NFL draft. I think it's going to be sky high. Right. Um, 
But if, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens once the season gets closer if they draft somebody or something like that, and if it plummets. You know, it's kind of the same way with this whole Arizona fiasco, where who knows what's going to happen with David Johnson and Chase Edmonds and and Kenyon Drake. Like those guys, those are all guys that are like on my list of like I really need to be able to like look into these guys heavy and see what their values are going to be next season. Um, yeah, they're, they're going to be heavily debated. I guarantee it. You're going to see values all over the place with these guys. Um, yeah, but anyway, let's, let's move so, on to, uh, <clears throat> our wide receiver bust. All right. So we got the Justin Blackman wide receiver bust award, and I'm just going up in smoke with Josh Gordon. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if, for a second, I was thinking he really didn't play all that many games, but he really only missed a few games. Yeah. Um, he, he was like, I guess, injured or whatever. And then, you know, the Not Patriots really. were like, we're done. Uh, we've, we've had our fill of these, like, sign-off uh, receivers. So we're, we're, just, we're going to release him. Just so everybody's aware, we're going to release him. And then Seattle picks him up. He really didn't do anything there. Um, but yeah, 47 targets, 27 receptions, uh, you know, less than 430 yards, one touchdown. Whoopity do. I mean, this is not, this is not what you expected to get out of the guy. Um, when, when you drafted him, uh, and I, I took him in a couple of leagues can't remember where I got him in fantasy six pack. I want to say it was like seven or eight though. I mean, yeah, well, you I knew, you knew reached... Kevin, you knew Kevin and Jonathan were going to go hard after him. So you had to go early. Um, well, exactly. I'm even gone for him in the sixth, but yeah, but I like the thing is, though, is once he came over to new England and the hype just blew up, man, everybody was like, Oh man, there it is. Here it is. Like, you know, once that was like, once he was back and he was with new England back, like that was it. His, his, stock rose and I I just I've just kind of pushed him away for years and I've been right every year it feels like so he won me a championship that one year he just killed it and then I you know ever since then for some reason I just haven't gotten him and I just have brushed him aside thankfully so yeah no I I took him at the 6-1 Ooh. so I I went after him hard because I knew those other guys were going to Of course, get man. Him. You had to. If you wanted him, you had to go for him in our league because there were so many fans of him. Uh, but yeah. mine is going to be Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, talk about hype, man. Coming from New York where, you know, he was just a target monster and, you know, he got it done in New York despite Eli being Eli. Goes over to Brown, the Browns with Baker Mayfield, who you called a bust, and yeah. no surprise that his primary receiver Odell Beckham also became a bust. Um, this guy was a wide receiver. He was drafted at like wide receiver six or something like that. I think maybe five overall. And he's turned it into 71 receptions for 954 yards. That's not terrible, but three touchdowns, man. He's finished at wide receiver 29. Look, I get it. That's still useful most weeks um, and you're going to look at it and go, Oh, well he still finished wide receiver, you know, th- wide receiver three. So there's, there's room to grow. He's got, no, uh, dude, that's, that's a bad, that's a bad, that's a bad pick. That's a bus pick guys. Sorry. Um, any yeah. for any, any top five guys that finished out of the top 20, that's a bad pick, man. You, you bank on those guys really coming through for you. So, um, OBJ yeah, he was is, is my guy. Consensus number six. Yeah, overall, and it was five or, or six. Or I don't have six, I don't have it up. Six my, for receiver. Sorry. Yeah, my my computer's being super duper slow right now. So, but um, yeah, so can, I can't disagree with that. Obviously, <laughs> if I thought Baker was right there, like you said. So, yep. <clears throat> all right, moving on to our Randy Moss wide receiver MVP awards. Um, my pick here is Mr. Chris Godwin. Love it. Uh, I mean, dude, this guy, I drafted anywhere from like the fourth to the sixth round. And he finished out as wide receiver two. Yeah. Uh, so insane. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, and you're and, done with the analysis. 
<laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's all you need to know. Yeah, right? The stats speak for themselves. He's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so mine here is uh, I wasn't really trying to tell you to cut off, but I mean, I pretty much that that pretty much sums it up there. But uh, mine, you know, I'm just gonna state the obvious: Michael Thomas, the number one guy. He went in the first round, but like he's put up record numbers, as we all know now. So. Um, he's the obvious guy. He's finished leaps and bounds above everybody else at this point. But my MVP, if we're throwing a little value with the V, is Kenny Galladay. Um, was a was a third to fourth round pick in most leagues. Um, <clears throat> is now finished wide receiver five. So not quite as good as Godwin. He would have been mine, obviously. But Galladay's been been nothing short of spectacular, despite Stafford missing almost half the year. Um, he's just been able to find the end zone and kind of salvage some pretty mediocre yardage weeks with you know chump quarterbacks back there. So um, Galladay is a guy who I value very highly, especially in dynasty leagues. And if you can, if you were able to somehow snag him this year in, for a dynasty league. Uh, Kudos to you. I did. <laughs> um, I, and again, it goes back to what I was looking at earlier. Comparison wise, these guys were only three off from position, you know, ranking <clears throat> their targets were damn near the same. Um, you know, God went a little bit higher, but look how many receptions more. He had 24 more receptions yeah. on well, seven that's, more targets. That's quarterback's play right there, man. That's pretty much all I, it yeah, comes down to. That's what I mean. I mean Winston like, is just better than David Blau and, oh, man, who was the other guy who started for them for like uh, a week? Driscoll. Driscoll, Jeff yeah. Driscoll. Uh, but, I mean, you know, Stafford, when, when Stafford was there for Galladay, Galladay was like, I mean, Galladay was the man. I mean, I was. Yeah. I mean, you remember how good my team was early in the year when I had like Galladay steamrolling through through people, scoring twenty plus points a week, easy. And then yeah. Stafford got hurt, and I think I so I I had one of my running backs get hurt too, and like I was struggling, and I kind of like crawled to the finish line, and it just I, I had enough of a lead, if you want to call it that, and you know. It, <laughs> You know, I, don't, just, I don't. I don't want just, to call it that. I just got an. I just got enough out of Galladay when it mattered. Um, yeah, that's really all I came well, yeah, down in to. A, in a tough matchup, yeah. too. I mean, yeah, that was incredible. <laughs> I was like, I was so thankful he scored over Chris Harris. That was amazing. Stands out the most is, the, yeah, this guy finished as a wide receiver five. Okay, he was drafted, you know, w- way later than that, and. He had crap quarterbacks, but he he was kind of all, uh, borderline matchup proof. I mean, if, if Stafford had been though, there a whole season, his his stats would be astronomical. Yeah, it will be interesting though because you know it is hard to predict touchdowns and repeat touchdowns, and he's leading the league in yeah. reception touchdowns right now on sixty two receptions. So he's going to be another one of those yeah. guys where it's like, can he keep up that efficiency? Um, you know, maybe you think he can because Stafford will be back and they're going to be slinging it, but they're also going to have carry on back hopefully, or maybe another running back in there. And, you know, maybe they won't pass the ball as much. It, it, he's going to be another one of those guys. that's going to be heavily debated next year. I think so. Absolutely. All right. So let's move on to the tight end position here. Um, went ahead and called this the Kobe Fleener tight end bust award. Uh, there's a Fleener's lot of guys we could have gone season, but what's that? There's a lot of tight ends we could have gone with. I feel like, but Kobe Fleener got, yeah. got the pick here. Yeah. So my uh, my, my tight end tight bust end award, award is <laughs> what's that? The University of Miami bust <laughs> bust award. Yeah. A lot of those um, guys. I I had to go with OJ <laughs> Howard here. I mean, this is a guy Easy who pick. was so hyped coming in. Because again, Bruce Arians was coming to Tampa, not to Arizona, and um, he just—I mean, you just figured, okay, well, Howard is the go-to guy. You know, he's athletic, he's talented, he's got you know a, a few other guys that he's got to fight with for targets, but their running game is trash. So 
it's got to be a passing, you know, offense. Dude, it didn't do anything. I mean, 54 targets, only 34 receptions. And one touchdown. I mean, this is a guy who was drafted as a top five tight end. And yeah, I mean, he was he being lumped in 27th. He was being lumped in as like, oh, he's going to finish up there with like, you know, Ertz and, and those guys. Cause you know, he was really good last year and I was buying into it big time. You know, I thought this office was going to yeah. be much improved. And again, like you said, the running game was bad. Yeah. He's been, he's been just garbage, dude. Total garbage. Um, but I mean, and that's the thing. Bruce Arians just, doesn't really like tight ends. No, I mean, the, offenses are not the only reason he ends. got some more <laughs> use was because of the injuries yep. that they've had. And that's really it. I mean, I feel like Cam Brait was used more efficiently Dude, than, too, than Howard was. Two so. goose eggs. Two goose eggs. My God, that man. Hurts. Two you goose eggs and two one catch games. <laughs> Come on, dude. Uh, so brutal. Uh, so mine's Vance McDonald, another guy who was being hyped. Uh, Mr. Stiff Arm himself, um, you know, was another guy who was being put up there, you know, probably a little right after the the O.J. Howard group there. But another guy who people were like, okay, well, once you get past like O.J. Howard and, 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 and like, maybe cook it's going to be it's going to be Vance McDonald so get Vance McDonald yeah I mean I know he got banged up concussed but ugh, just nothing and yeah you can blame it on Ben Roethlisberger being hurt sure that probably has a lot to do with it um, yeah definitely but he really just wasn't making plays wasn't getting open you know maybe he was being used in the passing game more or in the running game more i, I just he was he was a huge letdown this this year man so yeah all right all right so let's finish out these tag team awards here with the tony gonzalez tight end mvp award i'm going with mr jared cook on this one um you know he finished as tight end seven <clears throat> but if you look back at his games, he started off the season really slow. Mm-hmm. And then he really picked it up, you know, later on. So that to me, I mean, he was basically like the seventh, usually seventh guy off. Um, so, I mean, it kind of fit in right where he went. But, I mean, even in, uh, you know, in half PPR leagues he didn't do anything for the first four weeks and you know after that he finally started getting a groove and you know a lot of that was without um breeze on the field i mean he did miss a couple of games himself right in the middle of the season there but you know once him and breeze got back together they just started clicking so yeah man that's my pick yeah, that was a good one. I was kind of surprised you didn't go with your boy uh, Darren Waller there, the one I made made fun of you for for drafting pretty early. But uh, I, I he I was good. For sure you do I, it. I liked Waller a lot too. Thought for sure you do it. I anyway, had Cook in another another league, and I just been, I had to go good. with him. So my eyes would be Mark Andrews. I know Mark Andrews. You know, kind of it started out like gangbusters, man. You know, twenty two twenty point games in a row. You know, kind of sprinkling in a couple one single digit games, but overall, man, this guy's just been steady as a rock. Um, big red zone target for for Lamar in that offense. Um, yeah, not a big downfield guy, but uh, just just seems to get it done week in and week out. And uh, he especially got it done in the in the playoffs in in the championship round for you guys. Twenty four point three points in week sixteen, so is his highest total of the season. So you guys are loving that. I'm finishing the the fantasy football season is is tight end number two and this guy was, you know, toward the end caught caught a wave and and crept up into the top twelve. But I had him there the whole year or the whole draft season. And you know, in the very beginning, he was like tight end sixteen, seventeen. I feel like, and he just kind of 
you know, slowly crept up boards. People started finally talking about him more. Um, and he was, he was the guy who I snagged a little later in, in a couple leagues. Um, and no surprise, my wife who, uh, ripped out the, the rug from under me in, in our home league made the finals had Mark Andrews. So, uh, I kind of waited on tight end and got Mark Andrews and, I thought I was going to get him, and she took him like a pick before me as her second tight end. Her her other tight end was Zach Ertz, and I was like, "Really, really, you're going to take your second tight end as Mark Andrews? I hate you." <laughs> now I'm left with, "Oh, guess who mine was? Vance McDonald." <laughs> Not good. So somehow my home league figured out my family league, who knows nothing about fantasy football, uh, figured out that Vance McDonald sucked this year. They're all they're all they're all Ravens fans. So they don't like to pick Steelers, so that's kind of why. <laughs> but um, anyway, it's just kind of funny how that worked out. All right, man, let's yeah. come here and finish off uh, fantasy football awards. Kind of our special awards here, our consensus ones. Um, so we've got our sleeper. <laughs> funny name here. You got it. Sleeper dot app award for best late draft pick. We had a couple guys here. Cortland Sutton was in the running, but I think we ultimately went with John Brown. Uh, this yeah. guy was ADP, I believe it was like in the 130s. Um, I did not write down his stats for some dumb reason. Um, but he he finished like wide receiver 15, I think. I mean, just that he was a, a monster most weeks, man. Like he was just consistently good. Um uh, I feel like there was a streak where he was like over. Um, I'm trying to think of what it was. There was a streak where he was like he was either like over a hundred yards or like over ten fantasy points or something like that. I forget exactly what it was now. I think um, it's over ten. Yeah. No. No oh, man. Now I can't. Now I can't remember it. It was a while ago. I remember hearing it was like right in the middle of the season. Man, he had he just he had like a, a number of games where he just was like steady and he was just consistently good but even his down games you know like the worst game was like 7.9 right like it's not bad like he was just good he scored a lot so that helps week four uh, and i'm looking in uh, i'm assuming this is half ppr because it's our our league yeah week four against new england all the way to week 14 he had double digits, at least 10 um, fantasy points in half PPR. Week 14 against Baltimore, only 5.6. But then he went right back to it in 15 and 16 with a 16.9 and a 12.6. So, yeah, I mean, he had two games all year that were not double-digit points. I mean that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, finishes out in in our league at least as a wide receiver fifteen. Um, his ADP was one forty two. Oh, let me double check if that's no. Sorry, that's standard. Yeah, it's so, it's still it's still pretty good though, man. Like he he really kind of he, he was a guy who you know he, he was a risk man because he's obviously got the sickle cell trait or. And, you know, so you never know how it's going to react. He's, he's had that problem before. He's had other injuries before. Um, you never know. It's because of that trait that he had the injuries or not. And then the Bills offense, like, you just weren't really sure how that passing offense was going to be. But Josh Allen took a big step forward this year. Not that he's not that he's awesome passing, but, you know, they had to respect him running. And John Brown can just beat you deep, and that's what worked. So there you go. Yeah, uh, in half PPR, it was even worse. He was like a 160. Yeah. So, I mean, he's a I standard mean, league guy. I mean, you just you figure he's going to catch two, three balls for a deep ball and catch and and, and, yeah. and score. And and that's what he was. Um but you know, he's he's caught 72 for over 1000 yards. So that's pretty it's pretty damn good. Um yeah. I have a feeling he's he's going to get drafted a lot earlier next year. So, moving on, uh the Reggie White Award for best value defense and we're going with the San Francisco 49ers. A team that went undrafted for obvious reasons. They were just dead last. They were dead embar- last they were embarrassing last year. Like they've come out and just played 
awesome. Uh, yeah. And really, I mean, I think we all know at this point like how good they've been. You can't really do much against them unless you get Lamar Jackson. Um, so, or um, or Drew Brees. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, there you go. Pretty much all we can say there. Uh, the other uh, the other quarterback who I wanted to name the bust quarterback award for. So so I named the uh, biggest draft draft bust award after Jamarcus Russell. Uh, we're giving it to Damian Williams. This guy was a second round pick in most leagues, late second round pick in most leagues. Yeah, he's had a few injuries, but you know, a lot of people thought he was going to be the guy because uh, of how he finished so well last year. They bring in Shady. Uh, they drafted Darwin Thompson, Daryl Thompson, but still, Williams. Damian Williams was the guy. Daryl Williams. Darryl sorry, Williams. thank you. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, um, and he he fell off because of injury. Obviously, himself went on the IR, but he was the most trusted guy for a while. Yeah, man. Um, you know, Shady and Reed obviously have a history, and Shady got his chances. But I mean, dude, Williams was—he had so much hype coming in to this draft after winning so many people their championships last year, and and just surging through the playoffs for teams, you know, for fantasy teams. So that carried over, and everybody was on board with him. And and I mean, I only got him. I think I did get him in one league. It might have been in one of the best balls that we did, but um, did it one twenty plus point game, uh, four double digit games, including that twenty. Um, you know, but he he only played in ten games. So again, for somebody, if you're drafting somebody that high, you you expect them to be there for the full season, if not, you know, maybe miss a game or two, but. He just had these little ticky tack injuries all year, so it's not even just that, man. He's just like there were too many games where he was single digits, just not used. Um, yeah, it was just it was just bad. Like even when he was in there, like the, they would give the ball to Shady too much, and guys like that. It was just it was a bad pick for everybody, and you know you had to see the writing on the wall when they brought in Shady, and and you know they drafted two running backs, but you know some people just try to turn a blind eye to be like, eh, whatever. It's just you know they're building depth and. Whatever. Um, yeah. So, all right, let's finish it out here with the Arian Foster Award for Best Undrafted Player. Uh, we got a little little tag team effort here as well with uh, Devontae Parker um, and then uh, DJ Chark. So, I mean, Chark was barely owned, you know, in, in week one or before week one. You know, his ADP was around 290, 291. Yeah, and he finishes the 14th best receiver. <laughs> uh, I mean, Parker was a little higher than that, so he, he was drafted in in some uh, bigger I leagues, mean, deeper leagues for yeah. sure. Twelve teamers and people that took many. people that took a shot on him with like the last pick just for the hell of it. I I know I saw that yeah. in a couple of leagues, but he was dropped easily to oh, yeah. like in, in most leagues after like a first couple of weeks. Because he was looking like Devontae Parker of old. So everybody was like, ah, all right, fine. My chance is gone. So, yeah. But they've yeah, both been so phenomenal. Especially he down, finished down out the century, as man. wide receiver 11, half PPR. Yeah. Can you believe that? How good he's been? I'll, like, I'll take that. I mean, how crazy. Where were you is... on the pie week, Parker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It's, it's actually super <laughs> crazy. Insta- I actually just pulled up the Fantasy Pros rankings because the page was loading a little faster than ESPN's for me. Um, in standard links, Parker finishes wide receiver eight. <laughs> My gosh, that's insane. Um, yeah, dude, he's been he's been nothing short of great. Awesome. So, yeah. all right, man. Uh, I want to have a little fun here too. We want to give out our, um, you know, we have so many guys that just we were we were able to figure out that like there were so many guys ranked toward the top, right? You, you you know you look at Michael Thomas's and McCaffrey's and they were just that good, right? So we were like, look at all these guys that kind of mixed in, and none. It seemed like none of the first, second round guys that you expect to do good, they didn't finish at the top, right? Uh, they they're all sprinkled in around like the top twenty, top like that. So we thought we could probably build a team with 
the best team, like with guys from each round, like, you know, not saying like, oh, it's the first pick of the first round and the first pick of the second round. No, it's literally like within sort of a normal ADP range of where you're getting these guys. So we, yeah. we kind of eyeballed it. So this isn't like perfect science. So don't kill us if we're a little wrong, but what we did is we looked at it and put together a team thinking you're getting Christian McCaffrey right around like pick two or three because that's kind of generally where he went in most drafts. Saquon Barkley was the unanimous number one. Um, and actually Zeke was – or not Zeke. Or was it Zeke? Yeah. Yeah. No, Zeke. No, no. Kamara. Kam- no. Oh, it was between Zeke and Kamara. No, Kamara was four. So Zeke was like the unanimous number two once yeah. he was like – pretty much back right so McCaffrey was like third so I kind of went through and said okay first round obviously McCaffrey and then in the second round you could get Mike Evans near the end of the second round yeah I know he got hurt the last couple games but he was still he still finished wide receiver number eight and a half PPR leagues he would have finished way higher had he not gotten hurt Uh, but still you get Mike Evans in the second mix him with McCaffrey then you could turn around and get Jones at the start of the third I mean, Jones, nobody wanted Jones, man, because you just didn't yeah. know. Um, there was still talk that Jamal Williams was going to get a ton of work. But Jones is obviously beasted out this year, finish out run, running back number two. Um, turn around and get Mike Evans' running mate, Chris Godwin. As you mentioned, your MVP uh, yeah. in the fourth round. You don't even need to pick a guy in the fifth round, by the way. You can still get better value skipping around and taking DJ Moore in the sixth. Rounding out all your running backs and receivers. Then yeah. you can get Eckler in the seventh. Um, and then you don't have to take a pick again until round 10 to take Lamar. And that's probably early, to be honest with you. Like, to where he really was going in a lot of leagues, you could probably get him later than that. You could take Mark Andrews in the 11th. And then, obviously, your defense, the last pick, just take the Patriots. You have the most ridiculous fantasy team. That's how crazy this year was, guys. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a year where you could take like a top five guy in the first ten rounds, skipping a couple rounds. It is insane how good this team would have been. Yeah, uh, I mean, <clears throat> I I've had. Probably everyone on this list on a team. Actually, no, I've only had about half of these guys on my team yeah, this I had, year. McCaffrey I had Edwin, and a Goodwin. couple. Lamar and one. Jones, I didn't own at all. Evans, I didn't own at all. Godwin, I had in a couple. <clears throat> Moore, I didn't own at all. Um, you know, we, we could have thrown Galladay in there. I think he was right in uh, there with, with Godwin, though. Yeah, he four, was. So. He was. So that's why I didn't. That's why I picked uh, yeah, Godwin so over like, Galladay. And and their like their Godwin ADPs there. were like two apart. So yeah, Godwin was like, uh, like three or four from the end of the the fourth round, and Galladay was like two picks behind it. So I just kind of yeah. took the range and said you could take Godwin. So if you couldn't get Godwin, yeah, get Galladay, and you're almost just as good so whatever yeah um yeah i owned everybody from wide receivers down in one of my leagues i didn't own any of the running backs or lamar in any of my leagues um, yeah so i mean yeah pretty pretty crazy and in fact i owned uh i owned more and uh i owned Adam and more in, obviously, but I owned more in a couple different. I owned more in two leagues. God went in my fans. My fr- yeah, I don't know. I thought I owned like multiple of these people on like one of the on one of my teams who did really well, but I can't remember which one now. But yeah, it is just kind of like eye opening to see that. I mean, yeah, you know, we always say like your you know your early picks are important, but finding the right guys, finding the right value in yeah. your draft is so much more important too. Um, so, yeah. I mean, the, the the big takeaway here too, we could have potentially gone Dalvin Cook in the second, but Evans obviously had the better points. 
So that's well, why we went with him. But well, no, 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 no. I also went. I didn't go Cook because Cook went early in the second. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And okay. so that didn't so match we up with taking McCaffrey. So I was kind of holding right. that slot range too. So yeah. this was kind of an early slot range. You know, if you went later, yeah, you could take like a Thomas and a Cook, and maybe that worked out. Um, but I kind of went yeah. with McCaffrey. Then was you're just not getting Jones. Yeah, I kind of so. went with McCaffrey. Was so much better. That all these yeah. guys, like, you wanted him. Uh, you know, there's obviously multiple ways to, to to do this, but this just, this to me was like the obvious way to go. Um, but yeah, on the flip side of this, the bad news is that there's a bunch of guys who got injured. And, you know, every week we just talked about new injuries, new injuries, new injuries. And I just feel like this year was just crazy. You know, I've never seen this many tight ends get hurt. I've never seen this many quarterbacks get hurt. You know, you always yeah. see it from the receivers. You always see it from the huge. running backs. But the quarterbacks, man, just dropped like flies. Um, you know, at least we got Mr. Mustache from it, dude. You know, that was the fun part about it. Um, but, yeah. you know, our fantasy football all IR slash did not play bust team, if you want to call it that is pretty stacked. I don't know if it would win some leagues, but they would definitely compete, man, if they all played and played up to their potential. Now you're talking Big Ben at quarterback, right? Uh, running backs, on Johnson, Darius Geis. And, you know, we saw how good Darius Geis can be when he's healthy. He didn't even get yeah. a lot of touches those couple of games that he was back. He was good. No, he really had he just that so one good. standout game. And then he got injured again. So it's like but he's so good, though he's so talented. Yeah. I just really want him to be healthy, not just I mean, as like a you know Connor Redskins fan at this point still, but yeah, I just want this guy to be healthy because I want to see how good he can be because I think he could be amazing. Uh, but you know, wide receiver, obviously Antonio Brown fiasco. We know how good he can be when he's on the on the field. Um, AJ Green's a stud. Just who knows what really happened there, man? Uh, Deshaun, yeah. One game with the Eagles blew up first game of the year. You're like, oh, man, here it goes. Uh, yeah. You know, not that he was going to do 20 points a game for the whole season, but, um, you know, he was going to mix no, in but just, plenty of those. That first that first game was just like, hey, wow. All right, the chemistry's here. Yeah, right. Let's see what happens. And then he gets injured the next game. <laughs> Sits for – eight weeks, whatever it was, finally gets put back in and re-injures himself immediately. Yeah. So, you know, he was, he wasn't someone that was really highly drafted or like early drafted, but he was taken. I mean, I would say in, in nearly every league, he was probably drafted somewhere. Well, yeah. Especially in best ball. Um, league, just man. just for the potential. Really and high. You saw it in week one, but yeah. you know, that, that hurt. Uh, you got David Njoku was the tight end we put in here. Um, yeah, more hype around that Browns offense. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, it's yet another Brown who's disappointed this year. <laughs> um, Will Fuller we put in our flex spot just because I feel like he could be on this year in and year out. Um, I mean, and yeah, like we, we looked it up, right? Like we had trouble filling this flex spot. Like there was guys that played – you know, a lot of games, but we're injured yeah. a lot of games too. And you look at like the amount of games that Will Fuller has played and it's like 12 games, but <laughs> I don't even know the number. I just kind of made that up, but it's, but it ends up being a lot. But then you look and you're like, Oh, but like four of those games, he came out like in the first quarter. Um, yeah. And he had one massive game against Atlanta. He scored 40 points Tampa. and had he with the Tampa, had he not done uh, that, I think it was Atlanta. Uh, but anyway, had he not done that, then he's literally nothing. Um, so, yeah, he's why he's the flex. I, you know, I'm sure there's <clears throat> somebody else that they could probably be a better, you know, total injury player, but maybe they didn't really matter as much is kind of why we picked him. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm sorry. It was <clears throat> Atlanta was early. They had just played Tampa and he didn't do shit. Yeah, he probably got hurt. <laughs> I yeah, he, yeah, he did actually. <laughs> I was gonna say, sounds about right. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean the Atlanta game—you take that away, he's got one. 
I mean, he had Indy where he caught oh, 11 for game. 140. Yeah. So in a PPR league or even a half PPR league, like, you're loving that game, right? Yeah. But everything else, man, was just not good. Just not good. No. Not from a guy who I mean, you expect to be way better in a Houston offense. That is good. Um, and then we'll finish off here with our defense, kind of a bust team. Like, did I really want to throw a defense on here? Probably not. But let's be honest. The Jags were drafted as a really high defense. Are they injured? I don't know about that. But, I mean, they lost Ramsey. Um, and the defense, is the whole team gave up. And the Jaguars were a complete bust, droppable very early in the year. Um, so, well, thankfully, you can find defenses off the waiver wire pretty easily and make up for drafting a Jags team. But, you know, some of these other guys, you know, um, a little harder to replace, unfortunately. Um, so, I mean, well, that's all we got for the awards. Congrats to everybody who got one. I, I guess congrats to our best winners. Uh, yeah. You guys got to shape up next year, man. Uh, don't, don't, don't let it happen again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and just to follow up on that Jaguars thing, it's, I put them on there mostly because of how dominant they were like, two years ago. And and people were still believing that, in it. The, yeah, I mean, you figured that you would be able to get maybe not that that great of production, but something close to that. And mm. it, you just didn't have it. I mean, yeah, nothing. Well, it didn't help. Yeah, you know, like I said, Ramsey leaving was a big loss, and yeah, the team just sort of gave up. So, I right, man. So this is our last show of the year, regardless of us doing one next week. But um, I want to say. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy holidays. We missed saying that earlier in the show, but we will see you all in 2020 as we, uh, I think we usually pick up things near the beginning of February with our fantasy baseball talk. It's that, ooh, sorry. It's that time again. Um, beer, the beer got me. Um, it's that time of the year again, guys. Fantasy baseball's in the mix. Uh, it'll be here before you know it and we will be ready for you guys with all of our preview shows uh, for all the positions and all that kind of good stuff we'll bring on some good guests to, to help out as well so uh, again happy new year aj you got anything else to add yeah i uh, hope everybody had a great christmas holiday and uh, likewise happy new year to everybody and uh looking forward to to a little break from fantasy sports. Um, I'm, I'm glad that I didn't do basketball this year. You just scared uh, to lose the, me for a fourth time. Whatever. <sighs> yeah, I, I got I it. I would have finally <laughs> beat you. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm looking forward to baseball. There's been a lot of moves already. Uh, yep. this oh, yeah, we got, our, uh, we got our transaction tracker on the site, too. So go ahead and check out the bigger the bigger moves talked there. So we got to yeah, analyze it's there. it's a very uh, – Un, un MLB like off season so far, I feel like. So, yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. If for whatever reason you're you're playing in week 17, good luck. Um, We've got week you, 17 uh, rankings if you really want them. <laughs> yeah. If you do any kind of fantasy football playoff leagues or, you know, best ball, whatever, good luck with that. And uh, just enjoy the rest of the season. Enjoy the playoffs and and just watch the football itself. Yep. Enjoy, guys. See you all next year.